When's the last time you saw so much hype, excitement, upset parties? People are just out of their minds about what is happening in the stock market. When's the last time you saw such a retail investor movement happen where stocks and positions went higher based on a consensus view instead of the institutional view, instead of the smart money view. Well, that's what's been happening this week. And people from Wall Street Bets, who's on Reddit, also on Twitter now, have taken command of companies that were left for dead, that hedge funds were shorting real heavy positions in, have now taken control and have driven these stock prices higher, causing a, a debacle on Thursday, a, a basically a shutdown of brokerage firms like uh, Robinhood and TD Ameritrade and Schwab about stopping certain high volume traded companies from trading. That only thing you could do was sell. I mean, who, when's the last time this revolution happened in the stock market? On CNBC, they had two different individuals who talked about how this is the change. This is the new way of doing markets and investing. Instead of markets being controlled by big institutional players like pension funds or mutual funds or hedge funds in this case, instead, they're being controlled by the market, the true capitalism driven retail investor. And what we're seeing is now the retail investor has a voice and the voices, well, it's loud. So let me make this disclaimer. Number one, these are my opinions. This is educational. This is not advice. This isn't for you to go on and invest with this is educational. There's no advice in this video. And number one, big number one, it's my opinion. My opinion is what happened on Thursday was wrong. We saw a brokerage firm who has come out of nowhere, who's captured a big group of people, millennials, and given them a way to participate in markets. And Thursday, it basically sort of tarnished that, that view of markets. And I think it fueled even more so the environment of billionaires against retail investors. And what we have seen over the last couple of weeks is billionaire hedge funds basically brought to their knees and broken and money being lost at record levels. And some really famous rich people have come out and said, yeah, this needed to happen. We do not allow markets to transact freely as they say we can. Instead, they're manipulated. And once the retail investor took control of, in this case, GameStop, we have seen a major move in a company that was at one point on the verge of bankruptcy, heavily shorted at one point, uh, two, I think a couple Fridays ago, was uh, had a short uh, interest of 100 or short, 138% of the existing shares were shorted, which mathematically it's like, how does that happen? It's a little bit, it's complicated. But my point is the retail market had a thesis and the thesis was this company can come back it can rejoin um, the the market and be a profitable company they had just signed a deal with microsoft and i believe sony to distribute their new uh, game stations um, and, and so and money had started coming into the company through uh, the ex, the ex-ceo of chewy's ryan cohen uh, in a big way about 12 percent ownership and the market got behind it, the market being the retail market. And what happened has happened, it is squeezed a lot of these billion dollar hedge funds and really put them on the ropes. Melvin Capital is the, the one that's been the prime company that has been really brought down in a big way. But I think what it, 
the underlying message is, is that markets don't function as we perceive them to function, that we hope they function. And what we are seeing now is a change. We're seeing the start of a possibly a free mark to market, a true price uh, to, to pricing of securities and investment. Robinhood is a prime example of a company that I think why they quit allowing people to buy these certain high volume companies on Thursday was an infrastructure issue. We saw it back in 27, 2016, 2017 with cryptocurrency where Coinbase started to falter. The, the infrastructure wasn't there. It started to break and they had to start shutting down and orders weren't uh, being processed in the correct manner and in a you know a even flowing manner and now we're seeing that with uh, Robinhood and some of these other brokerage firms when the mass comes into play and markets all of a sudden start trading at high volumes I mean insane volumes it becomes a infrastructure challenge and I think that is partially why Robin Hood and some of these other firms have shut down trading on Thursday and then limited trading today on Friday in some of these high volume stocks. Um, when you see penny stocks below a below a buck trading, you know, volume in the billions, that's unheard of. I mean, Apple doesn't trade at that level on a great day. So I think what I'm what I see is that infrastructurally the system isn't prepared for this kind of movement the other side of this is i believe there's cracks in the foundation when you see number of brokerage firms shut down trading in certain stocks i believe there's a underlying issue and maybe it's something similar to what happened in 97 with long-term capital management. Long-term capital management was a group of, um, uh, what is that? Um, anyways, they won some um, Nobel Peace Prize awards in economics. They had a bunch of these guys um, who had figured out um, pricing on options, uh, the Black-Scholes uh, ratio, which uh, helps you price derivatives. And these guys were geniuses. and. These guys had, they were producing crazy returns, double digit, mid-level double digit returns year after year after year. And I think it was in 97, they had a short position against the Russian ruble and a long position against the, lira, the Italian lira. And all of a sudden, um, Russia basically came out and said, basically shut down their currency in some way. You need to go Google it, it's very interesting. And these guys were losing $500 million a day. They were just losing money so fast. And they had leveraged up so much. They had borrowed so much money against their principal, unbeknownst to the banks that had lent them the money. Um, and they were on the verge of, if they had collapsed, they would have collapsed the market. And so the New York Fed came in and backstopped it and they portioned out their trades to a bunch of different brokerage houses and they sidestep a, a really a financial disaster uh, which you know if you remember back then 98 99 2000 or early 2000 markets were screaming it was the dot-com boom and then eventually bust and I, I, I wonder if this is exactly what has happened with the Robin Hood situation on Thursday and some of these other, other brokerage firms and the closing of trading on GameStop, AMC Theaters, handful of others, uh, BlackBerry. I mean, who, BlackBerry? I'm <laughs> like, where are they at? I mean, last, when's the last time you had a BlackBerry? It's been forever, right? I mean, the iPhone came out and boom, BlackBerry was done. All of a sudden, they're like a high-flying, profitable position. This is all has come on so fast. It has exposed the weakness in our financial infrastructure. Did they shut down Robinhood and these other company, the other 
brokerage firms because if they allowed them to keep going, we would have seen a another long-term capital management meltdown. Would we have seen um, markets get cut in half? I'm, I, I'm starting to believe, yeah. I'm starting to think maybe so. Maybe some of these hedge funds are so leveraged short on these positions, these short positions they have, and these the guys from Reddit and who and I think other people have jumped on this, and what it's caused is a situation where where if they didn't stop them, if they didn't stop them from trading, the market would have collapsed. And then everybody who is a long-term investor, a contributor to their 401k, or you know, just mom and pop living in retirement would have been, well, wiped out for a while if they had sold. Maybe it was that severe. Could we be at that brink where margin being at its all-time highs in uh, margin levels is, is starting to chew away at the foundation of, of the system? And are these, are we, are, is the system on the verge of breaking? I hope not. Who wants to see people get hurt? Who wants to see people lose enormous amounts of money? I mean, that's vindictive. That's just mean. To, but, but to manipulate a market, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying there's somebody at fault here. I believe you allow markets to trade, allow the market to determine what the price is, allow markets to trade freely. If it's an infrastructure issue, then admit it. It's an infrastructure issue. We can't handle this. We don't have the money to back this up. We we can't handle this. Well, okay, that's one thing. But to blame one or the other, to go crying to mommy because you've been used to producing billion dollar returns and all this stuff and then come screaming saying, you're about to kill me. This is wrong. My billionaire clients are gonna you know, lose a ton of money. That's not right. And, but I do think it's more than that. I do think it's an infrastructure issue. And I do think that years, a year from now, it'll come out that we, on Thursday, we're on the brink of, well, market disaster. I hope not, but my gut says, yeah, that's why all this is happening. And if you look at trading today, it's a little less volatile. It's a little less um, out there in a sense. Um, the frenzy, the hype has sort of subsided a little. And I wonder if it is because they put the circuit breaker on yesterday and said, shut the system down. We cannot do this. We're about to, we're on, we can't go no faster, Jim. We're about to break. In the end, I think it's being responsible. I think it's about doing the right thing. But I also believe you can't have this be a one-sided game. And now with retail investors now heavily involved, you've got to let markets flow, but you've got to have the infrastructure to do it. And maybe this is where we see a new shift in how money is money flows and how markets behave in the future. I don't know. It's my opinion. We'll see. It's Friday, right? Have a great Friday and a great weekend. <laughs>